Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Elias Talks Money Vlog, where I talk all things money. Today I'm going to be talking about an enterprise software stock, one that has infamously marketed itself as a replacement to email. While most of the stay-at-home stocks have done really well in 2020, this stay-at-home stock has lagged its peers, and the name of this company is Slack. And in this video I'm going to be discussing the following. Firstly, what is Slack and what does it do for its customers? Second, I'm going to talk about their business model and how they make revenue and how they intend to grow. Then I'll give a brief overview of their recent financial performance and discuss their stock valuation and why I feel it has lagged. And lastly, I'll provide my thoughts on whether the stock is a buy right now or not. The best way to describe Slack is as a workplace collaboration hub that aims to bring people, applications, and data together through its platform, which has various features, including messaging, file sharing, video conferencing, and much more. The manner that the platform is organized is by channels, which may be organized by teams such as engineering department or finance department within an organization, or even around company uh, specific projects which require um, collaboration across several departments, or even by physical location. There are four key features of the Slack workspace, and naturally, the function of the channels helps with the first key feature of Slack, which is organization. As a side note, it should be noted there are privacy features which allow for conversations that should not be public for all team members. Beyond organization, the second key feature is a searchable history within the various channels. Therefore, once you have access to a channel, going, being able to go back and be able to access files and documents and get caught up on a particular project, for example, becomes much easier without the need to have emails flying back and forth, and, and that can make it much easier for people to get up to speed in the case of new team members or even, say, um, for someone who has gone away uh, on vacation. The third key feature of Slack is connected apps, which allows a company to connect outside third-party applications to the Slack platform, which allows users to potentially do their work without leaving the Slack workspace. There are literally thousands of apps, everything from email and calendar applications, CRM tools such as salesforce.com, social media applications such as Twitter, and even customer support platforms like Zendesk. The fourth key feature of Slack is Slack calls, which allows users to do group voice and video calls which also comes with screen sharing capabilities. Though it should be noted that Slack integrates other uh, video applications such as Cisco WebEx, Zoom, Teams, and Skype. So essentially you're not limited to using Slack's video service and the organization has the ability to use the apps that it wishes. The platform is really designed to be interoperable and it appears that the company is very focused on being that central hub for workplace communication and is very open to working with others to make that happen. Slack offers a freemium model whereby users are offered a free access and they can upgrade to a paid package uh, to gain additional features, uh, additional usage, and or functionality. The package are categorized as free, standard, plus, and enterprise grid, which would take into account the involvement of salespeople and is tailored towards large organizations. And pricing for these plans varies roughly from 60, 67 US to 12.50 per user. For example, for a company with a free version, they would be able to access their most recent 10,000 messages and the third party app integrations would be limited to 10. And they would be limited to one-on-one -on -one audio and video. If, if you then upgrade to the standard package, that would take that 10,000 message limit away and you would get unlimited integrations and the ability to do group calls. Then on the premium plan, you get 24 seven customer support and guaranteed 99.9% .9 uptime, which, and it also allows for uh, SAML single sign-on to reduce having to individually sign on to multiple applications. Then lastly, you have the enterprise level, which is uh, has features such as organization-wide search and announcements. This also the, involves the creation of multiple workspaces and channels that go across various workspaces. And there is uh, security, compliance billing, and platform integration management. In addition, there's the ability to integrate um, with data loss prevention tools, uh, e-discovery, enterprise mobility management, and offline backup orders. As far as the company's financial performance, they grew 49% year over year in their last quarter to 215.9 million. Relative to their last few quarters though, this does represent a percentage deceleration in their growth. In fiscal year 2019, their growth rate was in the high 50s, and in 2018, it was over 100%. But you're getting to the law of large numbers now. While the growth rate, I'm sure, will continue to be really high, I do expect it to continue to come down a bit as the company matures. Moving on, their gross margin was 187.5 million, in their last quarter, or 86.8%. And this is consistent with their historical margins, which have been in the mid 80s over the past four years. That said, there has been some volatility around this figure from quarter to quarter. Their operating loss last quarter was 68.6 .6 million, and this comes down to their expenditures in SGNA and in research and development. In their last quarter, they spent 162 million and 94 million, respectively, on these two items. And I do expect as they continue to grow that these two 
these figures will continue to grow slower than their top line revenue and they'll eventually break even over the next few years. Over the last few quarters, Slack's operating cash flow has also turned positive, which is a positive indicator for the health of the business. As of now, the company is sitting on $1.5 billion in cash, and this is in large part due to an issuance of $750 million of convertible senior notes earlier this year. The funds were raised at a favorable 0.5% interest rate and comes due in 2025, and they have a conversion price of $31, which is just above where the stock is trading right now. There's usually some stock dilution risk related to note conversions if you get a lot of them at once, but the company has stated that it's entered into capped call uh, transactions to try to mitigate this risk. This is beyond the scope of this video, but overlaying call spreads can effectively push up the price at which share dilution occurs. And I'll leave a link in my YouTube comments which explains this in a clear and concise manner. The value of the company is currently sitting at around $16.7 billion, closer to the high end of the range where it has been over the past five quarters. But looking at the price relative to sales, it appears to be in line. Obviously, the price of sales in excess of 20 is high. And if we look at it, um, their only main competitor in this space, Microsoft, is trading at about uh, 10 price of sales. But it is a mature company, so that's not really a fair competition because the multiple for mature companies are usually much lower, and Microsoft is, well, one of the largest companies, if not the largest company in the world. If you look at other tech companies that have recently IPO'd, like Zoom, their price of sales is currently around 100, and Pinterest is around 30. So the valuation may not be that far off. Zoom's revenue growth, though, has been astronomical, and especially with the pandemic, and this properly justifies it trading at a higher multiples than Slack's, but Pinterest's growth uh, profile has been more comparable, with the revenue growing 58% in their most recent quarter versus Slack's 49%. Going back to Microsoft, I do realize this is the big elephant in the room when talking about Slack. It is one of the main reasons why people would not invest in Slack, and also perhaps why Slack has lagged behind the rest of the stay-at-home trade over the past 12 months, because they believe Microsoft will basically eventually eat Slack's lunch. While this is a possibility, Slack is completely focused in this area of workplace collaboration, and they do not have to wrestle with other competing priorities. Workplace collaboration is it for them, and there is something to be said when a company entirely focuses on a single area. While Microsoft Teams is a more convenient product to use, um, as most workplaces already have Microsoft Office, Slack has continued to grow. Anecdotally, some feedback that I've heard is that Slack is easier to set up and administrate. And that being said, this extra layer of complexity in setup and administration is also a competitive edge for Microsoft, as their security and compliance are industry leading, and perhaps their level of sophistication in this particular area is ideal for large corporations, while Slack's simpler approach is better for small and mid-sized businesses. You can see that on this graph here that Microsoft Teams has done a great job of establishing itself as a leader in collaboration software for large companies. But if we're looking at startups and early stage technology companies, Slack is a clear leader, um, and they have a clear niche with younger users. One of the uh, nice things about Slack versus Teams is the number of third-party integrations. In Slack, you have over 2,000 versus Microsoft only being 472. So creating a more custom-tailored user experience is definitely a plus for Slack. Slack also recently introduced their Connect feature, which allows connection to outside organizations, uh, potentially partners, vendors, and customers, for example, in a secure way. This is relatively new and will eventually or potentially be a catalyst for Slack's reacceleration of growth and furthering their goal of eventually replacing email. One of one of the outside threats to Slack is Google, which is now entering the workplace uh, collaboration space with Google Workspace. Like Microsoft, Google has their own set of productivity tools like Google Sheets, Docs, Slides, Drive, Meet, and more. This was announced in October of this year, so it's It'll be something that's interesting to keep an eye on, and we'll have to see how Google's product develops and what niche of customer they could potentially attract. Many businesses already use G Suite services for their email, data storage, and productivity tools that I just mentioned. So Google definitely won't be starting from ground zero. Whether it'll be a two-horse race with Slack and Microsoft or a three-horse race with Slack, Microsoft, and Google, I do believe the total addressable market is huge. It was estimated to be $28 billion by Slack last year, but I feel that doesn't fully represent the opportunity if workplace collaboration becomes the standard of how people do work in the future. There does seem to be a place for multiple vendors in this space, like there are multiple vendors in other areas of technology, uh, like cloud security, data storage, semiconductors, and more. Why should the workplace collaboration be any different? There's also the outside chance 
markets with the sector growing so rapidly that a large tech company may also want to buy Slack. While I believe Slack can ultimately succeed in the long run, I'm not going all in on this stock. I opened an initial position in the mid-20s over the past month, a bit lower than where it's trading at right now, and sold some covered calls into 2021 on one third of my position with an excise price of $39. I like to see how the competitive landscape continues to develop. And if they can continue to maintain their edge they have amongst startup companies, and if things develop well over the next 12 months with the rollout of Slack Connect, I potentially could double down, but I'm not quite there yet. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Please hit the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons to support and help grow our new channel. Keep your feet on the ground, your head in the sky, over and out.